right let me start the lab now in here first of all uh, you have to download the lab 4 folder from courseway then when you download the lab 4 folder you will have a data set called data space 4.txt file it's a txt file right uh, when you open this txt file and there are some data they have given the main thing in here you have to remember is now here see the data uh, names are the name of the columns are team next one is x1 x2 and x3 and in here this whole data are separated by using a space data have been separated by using a space right you have to take that idea this data set have been data are separated by using a space then after that right let me move to the lab sheet now in here they have mentioned right this data set about a major league of baseball in america in the past and as a description they have given how to identify the variables now in here think now that x1 variable represent the team's attendance it represent the team's attendance then next two variable represent the team salary team salary represent the team salary and next three variable represent the years right then as the first case in here right you need to identify the variables and enter this given data set into r right before entering into this given data set you need to set the path to this folder where your data set is there right then first of all you have to copy this path copy the path then go to the r studio use the set wd command right inside this wd function uh copy your path right and make these slashes into black slashes double black slashes right make them into double black slashes then let me run this one right then to check the path again you can use the get wd function right then already my path have been set to this folder lab 4 okay then as the first step we need to import that data set into our studio to import this one we need to create a variable in this case i will create a variable called data <coughs> data likewise right then uh, this is a text file right our data set is in a text file therefore we are using uh, read dot table function right to import the text file we are using what read dot table function inside this read dot table function you have to give this the name of your text file in this case the name of the text file is data space 4.txt right then capital d a t a data space 4. txt you have to give the extension and this is a text file right therefore we need to make the header as true if not it will show the header uh, type of that header right it will show then therefore first of all we need to give that header attribute we need to call this header attribute and make this header head attribute as true already you learned this one in the previous sessions right how to import it equal true then after that our data is separated by using a space then we need to give that separate equation equal is by space you can just leave it right no no need to put any spaces you can just keep it right separation right then let me read our data set okay now to check your data set run the editor mode to run the editor mode we are using the fix command inside the fix command call your da data variable right in my case my data is inside this data variable right then call this one then the editor mode will be open now here see all the data set in that given text file have been imported all these things you learned previously right this column represent the teams 
teams and this column represents the x1 column values and this one x2 columns values and this one represent the x3 columns values okay right then as the first now we need to identify the variables now we need to rename this x1 variable by attendance we need to rename this x2 variable by salary and we need to rename this x3 variable by years now already they have given in the lab sheet x1 variable we need to represent it by attendance x2 by salary and x3 by years right we need to change them right when you open this editor mode right remember to close it remember to close this editor mode before doing anything right then to rename this data headers in our data set that we are using the names function we are using the names function inside the name function call our data set my data set inside this variable datas then after that <coughs> we are assigning a vector right and we are passing the changing values separately right respectively we need to pass now here see in the first case i will run this one again the first one we are not going to change this team right we are not going to change this team header right we are keeping it as it is team one right then uh, for the first one we need to pass team we are keeping it, it as it is team then next one we are going to change x1 x1 should be what attendance attendance And uh, x2, x2 is now go to the lab sheet. You can check those things. X2 is salary, x3 is years, right? Then x2 is salary, right? Then x3 is years. Yes. Now let me run our command, right? Then to check this one again, no need to type this. Uh, fix function no need to type this fix command right again you can go move the cursor to there and you can run this one right now here see in our data set already the x1 have changes to attendance and x2 have been changed to salary and x3 have been changed to yes this is the way what do we change the names of this x1 x2 x3 we rename them into attendance salary and yes right now already we have done some changes to our data set now when we done some changes in our data set these changes appears temporary right therefore we need to fix them permanently right? we need to fix them permanently to fix them permanently we are using what attach function we are using the attach function and we are calling our data set right we are attaching and remember the most case right we need to run this attach function twice we need to run this one twice right first time and next this second time then it will show this message right following object are masked right for the position 3 attendance salary teams and years right it have attached right if you run this one once this uh, data will attach partially that's why we to attach it's completely we need to run this attach function twice remember that one run this function twice right already we have complete the first part we've complete the first section identify the variables and enter the given data set into r we identify the variables right now before going to the second section i will show you now I think you need to get a description about your data set. You need to get a description about your data set. Description, right? You need to identify, right? What are the things, what are the things about your data set? Then you can call str function. str function, str in the str function, you can call your data set. In my case, it is the data's variable, right? Contain in this data's variable. Then if you run this one, right, here see, in the console part, it will give a description about your data, right? Now in your, your data set, what is the type of your data set? Your type of your data set is data.frame. It's a data frame type of your data set. And here see, in your data set, there are 30 different objects. 
OBS represent 30 different objects. That means there are 30 different groups or there are 30 different teams in your data set, right? There are 30 rows, right? And there are four variables. There are four columns, right? Different four columns are there in your data set, right? And as well, uh, the team, right? The team column, the type of your team column is what? Character. And they have you some examples which are holds in that column, team column, right? The name of the teams, right? The Nashville, the next one, attendance. Attendance is what? The type of that attendance variable is numeric, right? Or the number, right? And the data inside that attendance. And next one, salary. Yes, they are also number, numeric, right? The type is numeric and they are data values will be show as the description, right? Then from here, we can identify the, what are the data types of your data set and uh, what are the, how many objects are there and how many uh, variables are there. You can get the description by using STR. Right, next. Right, let me move to the lab sheet. For the second part, they are telling obtain the following for each variable right for each variable now in this case i will do only for this yes right you have to try this one for salary and attendance you need to try you have to practice by yourself i will do only for the yes this everything i will do for the yes right you need to try for salary and attendance okay got it because the same statements we are using you need to replace them right then the first part you need to draw a box plot you need to draw a box plot then a histogram and stem leaf plot right in the previously you learn how to draw the box plot right that's okay again let me draw the box plot then i will draw the box plot simply right now think you need to draw the box plot for the years right you need to draw the box plot for the years for that we are calling the box plot now you need to draw for the year columns right let me open this editor mode easy and in here you have to check the what are how you have renamed this years column how you, you have renamed this year column in here i have renamed this one by simple by e a r s right then remember that one then just you can call the call by using that column name just call the years right just called by using the year names, right? In this case, right, I will not use any other attributes. I will just draw the box, plot, right? Then it will show the error. The figure is margin is too large, right? Therefore, you have to increase this margin of the plot. The plot margin, you have to increase. Then again, run this one, right? Then it will draw the box plot, right? Now, this block spot is vertically. Normally, it should be what? The block spot should be in horizontal. Therefore, you can use that horizontal attribute. Horizontal. There is an horizontal equal and we are passing it as true. Like as true. Then it will draw the box plot horizontally. Now, this is the box plot for the year. The data set inside that column, year column. Right. Then uh, in the previous session, you learn how to add the title and how to draw the box plot without the outliers. You learn, you can try. I am not going to teach again and again those things. Right. Next. Before drawing this histogram, I will teach you how to draw this stem and leaf plot. How to draw this stem and leaf plot. Right. And the next one is stem and leaf and leaf right very easy to draw this stem and leaf plot there's a simple function in R. we are calling it as stem function we are using this stem function inside the stem function call your data set now I think I need to draw this stem and leaf plot for the years then again you have to call what years the columns name you can just call that by using that name right and when you run this one then go to the console you see in the console this is the stem and leaf plot of the years then what is mean by this stem and leaf plot 
already you have learned those things in your ordinary level. For an example, statement leaf means now here's in here I will take some values uh, 10, 11, 12, uh, then uh, 22, 23, uh, 35, likewise. Now think you need to draw a statement leaf uh, plot for these values right you need to draw for these values then how to draw for these values now we can group them by using we are taking this first number right this is one for this one also one this one also first number is one this one also one then these three are in one group then this first number we take as the stem one then other one then one there should be zero then comma then next second number should be 1 to represent the 11 then to represent the 12 we are using 2 then similarly 22 and 23 stem is 2 to represent 22 then we are taking this second 2 then to represent 23 we are getting 3 this is the way then to represent 35 we are getting a separate 3 and 5 this is the way how to represent a stem and leaf plot got it how to represent the stem and leaf plot very simple things right next then uh, you can draw the stem and leaf plots for the attendance and the salary also just you have to replace that attendance and salary name to draw the stem and leaf plot in R. right very easily next one histogram to draw a histogram and to draw a histogram right we are using in R there's a function called hist function hist function inside the hist function again call your data column what's your data column yes right call your data column yes, right. yes. then uh, without any event I'm not using any attribute Again, I will uh, run this one, right? Then it will draw the histogram. This is the histogram, right? Simply draw. No need the other attributes about, uh, no need to name, use a title. Automatically, it will get the title histogram of years and represent the x axis, and as well, it will represent the y axis, right? Now, in here, I will teach you some extra thing right for the histogram now think right now now this histogram has how many bars how many bars in this histogram one two three four five there are five bars in this histogram right in the range the all the bars in the range of 20 right and here I see the first bar is 0 to 20 it represents from 0 to 20 the second bar value it represents from 20 to 40 then 2020 the difference is 2020 now think you need to draw a histogram from the bar breaks from 0 to 10 0 to 10 then 10 to 20 there should be another bar then 20 to 30 there should be another bar 30 to 40 there should be another bar likewise there should be uh, we need to uh, we need to add some other breaking points breaking points to extend this histogram right now the difference from this one is 0 to 20 no? then the neck I need the difference from 0 to 10 right 0 to 10 then to take that one right in here we can use a attribute called breaks inside the hist function we can use an attribute called breaks right breaks then we are passing this breaks the sequence function we call it as seq function sequence function inside this sequence function i am passing the range the range is starting from where it's starting from zero and this range is ending ending from 100 it is ending from 100 start from zero and ending from 100 uh, go to this uh, x-axis yes right then zero comma 100 start from zero and end in 100 next I am int 
in here as an attribute inside the sequence function i am passing the length in here length means now already now here length means now there are five bars right to represent these five bars now think how many breaking points in here we have uh, 0 is a one breaking point 20 is a one 40 60 80 100 these are one breaking points right then one two three four five six you see to represent five bars we need six breaking point we need six breaking point now if we divide we if we divide by like this 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 right then how many breaking points are there it's starting from zero therefore there are 11 breaking points there are 11 breaking points for for the 11 breaking points there should be 11 bars there should be separate 11 uh, bars right now need i need uh, 10 uh, bars right then i will pass the length function length attribute right length attribute right not the function length equal and i will pass this one as 11 i will pass this one as then uh, let me run this one you see then the histogram will be breaks into 10 bars now here see one two three four five and these two spaces right these two sp these are two spaces this we have been another two two right then this one is another one and this one is another bar and at last 90 to 100 there is no any frequency in that range that's why no any bars right but we have already break them into right 11 breaking points zero this can be 10 this can be this is 20 this can be 30 this is 40 this can be 50 and this is 60 this is 70 80 90 100 like this it have breaks you can break them into different breaking points what it how to break them into different breaking points you will learn more about the histogram operation in the lab 5 right lab 5 i am not going to teach those things in now right uh, then in the uh, next lab, uh, we are using this breaking points and we are doing some uh, so many. We are building that uh, table. We are building the uh, class intervals tables. We are building the class intervals and the frequencies. Then the, we are finding the mid values. Next, we are finding the uppers. Right. Then next, we are finding the cumulative frequencies and we are drawing the polygon diagram. Right for the histogram we are drawing in the next lab we are doing so many things right therefore uh, today just to be familiar with that one i will teach you about this uh, breaks about this breaks is the way right then this is the way how to draw the histogram the next part right already we done the second part the next one right part b then you can try this one for the other variables attendance and salary also right next one you need to find the mean median and standard deviation first quartile the third quartile and interquartile range you need to find those things right simply there's a one function right by using a one function you can get some more values right you can get some more values right that function is summary using the summary function inside the summary function call our data set my data set in this year variable then let me run this one it i run it again right here see in the summary function it will show the minimum value what's the mean of your data set minimum value in your data set and the three percent what is the first quartile of your data set this is the first quartile and this is the median of your data set and this is the mean of your data set and this is the third quartile of your data set and is the maximum value of your data set by using the summary function you can find this mean first quartile median uh, mean third quartile and max right you can find them all together right then to find the standard deviation right to find the standard deviation and the deviation right 
there is a function very easy by we are using the first letters right first letters of standard deviation we are using hd function function and pass your data set right. then if you run this one this is the standard deviation very easy right hd function to find the standard deviation we are using hd function right as similarly to find the interquartile range interquartile quartile range to find the interquartile range we are simply using iqr function right it is capital right iqr should be capital we are using this iqr function and inside this function call the variable yes call your data set yes data yes column right then this is the interquartile range what's the meaning of this interquartile range simply interquartile range means what q3 third quadratile minus first quarter this this is mean by iqr iqr interquartile range means uh, third quartile minus first quartile right now now think you need separately this uh, first quartile and the second quartile now in this summary function it show this value all together no? minimum max first uh, third quartile and the mean median it show all together now think you need them separately you need this mean separately you need this median separately right you need them separately right then first of all i will show you how to find the median mean separately to find mean separately you can call the mean function right call the mean function and call your data set yes right. then here is the same mean mean is 29.8667 here also in the summary function also 29.87 it have a rounded to seven second decimal place in here in here it it shows four more decimal places right mean function you can call the mean function to find the mean separately then similarly now to get the first quartile third quartile and the median separately and min and max also you can get separately right there is a function right there is a function we call that function as not quartile quantile we call that as quantile right quantile right right we call that function quantile quantile function inside the quantile function function um, fast your data set right fast your data set when you run the quantile function it will show some values right it will show some values for the 0% it represent 1 for the 25% it will represent 9.25 50% 28.5 then 75% the point and by likewise it will show for the 100% then inside this quantile function means right is just like a vector it store these values just like a vector right in quantile function now i will run this summary function in here again I will run this summary function for the years, right? To check this one, right? Here is the what's this zero percent represent? It represent this minimum value, right? This twenty five percent represent what? First quartile. It represent the first quartile value. Here the same value. Then fifty percent represent what? It represent the median value. Here is the median value, right? Then uh, mean is not there in quantile. and the third quartile right it represent by this 75% and maximum it will represent by this 100% that's the idea you need to get from this quantile function quantile function right right now think now you need to get this uh, first quartile separately first quartile separately now i told you in this r how the vectors works right how the vectors work now this is a vector c c is a vector there are some values right in 20 30 
right these are some values inside the vector i told you this vector first index is what it is one right not it's, it's not starting from zero and this one is second index value this one is third index value third position value second position value first position value similar it is similar to that quantile function also it is similar then this one is the first index value this is the second index value this is the third index value this is the fourth index at last this is the fifth index value then now think you need this first quartile to get the first quartile from the quantile the same function you can use right quantile of the years right and pass the index index is 2 right here see this one is second index value well, second index and run this one then it will show the first quartile value separately similarly now thing you need the third quartile value right third quartile value. then you need to pass the third quartile value is at the fourth index this is the fourth index then pass the four pass the fourth index right fourth index now think you need to find the median separately to find the median we are using medium is what one two three third index then pass the third index This is the way how to get a quartile 1, quartile 3 and the quartile 2 or the median separately by using this quantile function you can get separately and if you need you can assign them into separate variable in here I will take q1 variable I will assign this uh, first quartile and q2, q3 variable I will assign uh, the third quartile right this is the first quartile this is the uh, third quarter then I will select and run this one together right I run this one together now think you need to find the interquartile range I will uh, use a variable called inter interquartile uh, just right and I will assign in here what q3 minus q3 minus q1 I will deduct this value q3 value from this q1 in the part of range is q1 q3 minus q1 right then let me run this one and now I will run this interquartile I will call this one call the variable interquartile right here's the interquartile range is what 25.5 then you can check whether it is correct or not by using what IQR function interquartile range function you can check this one then pass the years you can check right here the similar value is similar interquartile range value is similar right this is the way how to find the mean median uh, separate this is the way interquartile range right then now already we finished the first question right? sorry first and second question already we finished right how to find the mean median standard deviation all things the next part three right now they have told you write a function write a function to find the modes right modes of a given data set values right check the function by finding the mode of the variable yes right we need to check it for the years right you can check it this one for the attendance and as well for the salary also right what's the meaning by a mode mode means what now for an example mode means now I think there are some data in here. I will take some uh, numbers 1, 2, then 3, 3, 4, 5. These are some values in a column. Mode means what is the mostly repeatable number? Mostly repeatable number in here is what? 3. Repeatable number is 3. Right? Therefore, the mode is what? 3. Mode is 3. 
got it right maximum count right three mostly re repeatable number we need to find then right uh, i will give you some hint right then for this one right to get the data set from that uh, column you can use the table function right this is the third fiction q3 third fiction you can use the table function to get the year column separately to a variable table function you can use and in here right to count the names and right count the data set in in the that uh, data column you can use the names function names function and to find what is the most repeatable one you can use max you can use max function right right try to build a simple function by using these three functions i will give you one minute to think right then for the that part then the function first of all when we are creating a function right in r we are making a variable as a function no? right in here i will take a variable called modes right i'll take a variable called modes and i will assign the function function i will assign function function right now we need to pass the data columns right the years separately and the salary and the attendance therefore i will use one parameter simple parameter variable called y right you can get anything right then this is the function body right inside the function body again i will uh, create a variable to hold that data set hold that dot data set i will take it as count count or count right you can use it as count right then uh, how to assign the the data column to this variable for that we need what table function that's why we need the table function the table function we are getting from this y parameter now think when we pass for this y years we are passing this year column data to this y parameter then those data set will be is need to assign to this variable that's why we are using this table function now if you pass to this y parameter salary values in our data set then those salary values will be we need to assign to this count variable right that's the meaning of this one the next one the names we are using the names function right we're using the names function names function then what are the names what are the names now names of our count name of our count data sets right data inside this count variable right we are calling our count right count variable then now we are going to check we are going to assign right we are going to check one by one now these values we are getting as names right these are now thing these are the values inside our data set 1 2 3 3 4 5 these are the values now we are getting this one as a one name 
right this has a one name we are getting these values as a name in here right and we are counting whether what what is the name what's the maximum repeatable name in here what is the maximum repeatable name in here what's the maximum repeatable name three three is the maximum repeatable variable therefore we are counting from top to end we are counting i starting from here and we are counting one by one we are going to need to count right to assign this data one by one right we are using the square bracket now here see in here also index wise to assign this as index wise we are use this square bracket right similarly we are using here also square bracket inside this one again we are passing our count variable which hold our data set and we are checking whether this one is equal equal to maximum of max we are using the max function maximum of our count our count data set again our data set we are passing this is the condition we are using in here right whether this count is equal we are checking uh, one by one whether the maximum count is equal what is the maximum count of our data set right this is the function to find the mod simple function let me let you run the function next we need to call the function modes right then in the uh, data in our lab sheet they have you to find for the years find the mode for the years then pass your data set years pass your data set years for the modes function right then what's the mode in your da year data set it is the 33 then you can check this one right you can check this one open the fixed fix editor mode by using fix command open this one then here you can go through this year column right here see there are some 133 is there these are unique values right no any values right here also check whether there are any unique or similar same values right up to this point no any similar values 33 is there one right then there's another 33 in here then two 33s are there then you see there are another 333 that means there are three 33s are there then 33 is our mode in this year column mode is what 33 it will count it will take maximum maximum it will check one by one it will check what 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 is the repeatable value right right without using this uh, function max function without using this max function you can use a for for loop right instead of this max function right you can use a for loop to do the same one same function right try that one right then this is the third question end of the third question then for the fourth one right it is getting some time the fourth question right now they are telling to you right write a function that would produce the outliers right that would produce the outliers when the values are given right check the function with the three variables in the data set you need to check it for three variables outliers now simply the outliers means now this is let me draw a box plot this thing this is the box plot and you know this left side is the minimum this is the min one and this is the max one right normally outliers are in the outliers are in the which range right outliers are right over the max right over the max there can be outliers as well less than this minimum less than the minimum also they are outliers right outliers less than this minimum we can get this minimum as lower bound lower bound i will take it as lb and we can take this maximum as upper bound we can take this one as upper bound right lower bound and upper bound right then normally right outliers are lower than the lower bound and outliers are greater than the 
upper bound right this is the condition this is the condition this is the range where the tau plus i appears right then again i will show you another thing right another i will give some hint then uh, to find the upper bound ub i will represent this as ub there is an equation to find the upper bound right the equation is right q3 plus 1.5 1.5 multiply by iqr interquartile range right this is the equation to find the uh, upper bound and to find the lower bound lb q1 right minus 1.5 minus 1.5 multiply by interquartile range iqr right these are the two equation to find the upper bound and lower bound then you can create a function to find the outliers right try it i will give you one minute then i will explain even try to find this upper bound and lower bound inside the function try this one to find the upper bound and lower bound right then let me go through then to find the outliers this is the q4 to find the outliers again you have to create a variable to make it as a we will take a variable called outlier right and in here i will assign the function variable again right and in here again to pass that data set data column right then i will take a variable called g simple variable called g right then first of all i need the first quartile separately and the next the second quartile then to get the first quartile i am using quantile function right quantile function quantile function then quantile function of what the the quantile function of the data set we are passing to this parameter then we need to use that parameter and then index is 2 right q q1 index is what 2 remember that now. then q3 right then again quantile function we are passing the same parameter and index is 4 index is 4 next uh, you can find no need that uh, iqr function right you can find from this q3 and q1 the interquartile range then simple iqr it represent the interquartile range this is a variable right not that function iqr is a variable right that means uh, q3 q1 interquartile range right then how to find the upper bound upper bound take it as ub 
9 ub upper bound is equal q3 plus 1.5 multiplied by iqr iqr variable then lower bound will be right then will be equal q1 right minus 1.5 multiplied by iqr iqr this equations are constant right this 1.5 is not changing for anyone it's a constant right now already we have find the upper bound and lower bound next to print the outlines we need to pass the we need to pass the uh, range right before passing the range passing the range now let me print this upper bound let me print this upper bound right for that you can use the print function right print function now in here there are a different in our programming in normal other programming languages now think now you need to print this is as the upper bound now you be inside of the quotation you can use uh, upper bound you can type upper bound right you can type in other programming languages but in this r when you type these strings right inside this print printers function right in this print condition right it will not print right this upper bound will be not print right to take the, to print this one there is another function inside we need to call that function inside the print function we call that one as paste right as the label we have used this paste function right in na right we need to use this paste function Base function. Base in the inside the base function, then put a comma for concatenation and call the ub variable, right? To print the upper bound, right? Similarly, to print the lower bound, we need to print the lower bound also, right? Pass this on as lb. Call the variable simple lb and make this on this label should be lower bound. Lower bound. Got it? We are using this paste function in R. Right to paste this one. Right. The next one to print the outliers. To print the outliers, we can use another print function. You can use a print function. Now, listen this carefully. Then print function. and we are calling the print function then we need to paste here yeah, we need to print it as outliers and then print the outliers right we need to print take that form as in for an example we need to do this one i will draw and show you right we need to print outliers right outliers then double dots now i think these are the outliers a t right a t and there are can be other outliers also then a t comma 81 comma 82 we need to separate this each outliers by using a comma right we need to print it like this outliers outliers right 80 81 82 this is the format we need to print this outliers right to get this format inside the print function again i am calling the paste paste function then inside this paste function i am calling the outliers out lies yes and i will keep a space then right then after that now this is this inside this page function now print that condition right to print the outliers again i will use another page function i will use another paste function inside that paste function and in here i will pass give the condition to print the outliers right to print the outliers to print this outliers first of all i need to sort my data state sort for that i will use the sort function sort function inside the sort function i need to call my data values right 
my data values contain inside this parameter g inside this parameter g they have all this parameter g right then i need to check right i need to check one by one one by one value i need to check to check this one by one value again i use this one square bracket one by one value inside this g then inside this square bracket give the condition what's the condition g should be right g value should be need to check whether that g first value is less than lb lower bound right then we are using the logical o operator this is the logical o operator then next one g value is greater than ub upper bound upper bound right this is the logical o operator right you learn this one in the first lab this is the condition sort at sort then after the end of this sort function you see after the end of this sort function it is ending from this bracket move the cursor to that point and put a comma and we are passing an attribute called collapse right collapse I'll tell you why we are using this collapse right and in here i am giving this collapse as a comma that means what i need to separate this outlast by using a comma now in this 80 comma then 81 i need to print this one like this now to print this commas i am using that co collapse right to print that to print this uh, to print that commas i am using this collapse attribute right already we have created here the function this is the function right then let me check this brackets right this is the start of the sort function and this is the end of the sort function with the condition and this is the start of the pay this phase function and this is the end right then this is the next other one this one in and this one right okay this is the print awesome for the print for run this outlast function class function now call the function how to call the function right then it will display the outlast right outlast here see first of all it will print the upper bound upper bound of the years is 73 and the lower bound value is minus 29 then the outliers are 76 85 87, 87. these are the outliers these are the outliers right you can uh, conclude this one by using a box plot box plot for the years right yes and i will take this one horizontally equal to Horizontally equal to right and increase the size of your figure margin and let me draw this one right here see right here see these outliers are right greater than the max greater than the maximum value right outliers I appears in uh, in here there are three outliers in box plot right now what are the three outliers right what are the three hours i let you run this function right. you see what are the three outliers 76 you see 76 85 then you see this can be 76 then 85 means 85 is this can be this point because it is greater than this 80 right 85 then next one is 87 next one also 87 then in here 87 will be represented by using a one uh, one circle right both 87 are represented by using a one circle right that's why we are using this function to find the outliers right because uh, now we don't know how many uh, similar outliers are there when you draw this box plot 
right 87 is in the same position no? there are two 87s right got it and no any minimum outliers right no any minimum outliers only the uh, great outliers are greater than the upper bound greater than the upper bound right the way how to find the outliers Right, this is the function to find the outliers. Right, uh, then you can uh, separately find the outliers for the attendance and for the salary also. Just you have to pass the attendance and salary in here. You just pass. You can try. Right, then now already we have complete the lab. Uh, 